These are some exercises to make clear that I have been talking about the universe that's tuned in by the human nervous system. Now you've got 12 to 15 objects. Sit down at a coffee table or a dinner table where you've got lots of space and separate them into one group on the left and one on the right. On the left put all the red objects and on the right put all the non-red objects. Now you will find, you might find that some objects are partly red. Where do you put them? That's the beginning of destroying the either or that's dominated Western philosophy. But as you saw, I went to the red and the not red, including the things that are half red and half blue, which you don't know what to do with, and think, then separate them a different way, things that float and things that don't float. If you have a balsa wood duck like I do, yeah, that's one thing that floats. If you've got kids around, you've probably got a rubber wall that will float. Otherwise, everything goes on the side that's non-floating. And then try another division, metallic things and non-metallic things. Using your own ingenuity, think of about ten more ways of separating them. Notice how things move from left to right depending on how you separate them. And then ask, are the categories in the things that are... Do that exercise, it'll do you more good than hearing about it. Okay, next exercise. Go to a place with a lot of green growing things. The world is in glorious technical. See how many shades of green you can find, like I said. And remember the master who makes all those shades of green. Now, get yourself a pair of shades or sunglasses or whatever you call them, and look at the same view and see how it's changed. Did the change occur in you and the grass and the glasses are in some kind of relationship, a functional relationship? Now... Higgins, I'm interested. What about your boast that you could pass her off as a duchess at the embassy ball, eh? I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive if you can make that good. I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment that you can't do it. I'll even pay for the lessons. Oh, you're real good. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> you know, it's almost irresistible. <laughs> She's so deliciously low, so horribly dirty. Oh, you ain't dirty. I washed my face and hands before I come, I did. I'll take it. I'll make a duchess of this draggle-tail gutter snipe. Ow! We'll start today, now, this moment. Take her away, Mrs. Pearson, clean her. Sandpaper, if you won't come off any other way. All right.
we can see these four different quadrants. And we can see the interior of the individual and the exterior of the individual. And we can see the interior of these collectives. And we can see the form, the exterior form that these collectives take. Because without almost any exceptions, you can go to a human discipline and you'll find that it's divided into either left hand path, the right hand path divisions, or upper and lower path divisions, or it's stuck on one quadrant and denies reality to the other quadrants. But there are other sub disciplines in that same group and they will claim reality to one of these other quadrants. So it became really clear to me that these If you're trying to fly over the Rocky Mountains, you're going to use a map. Now, we all know that the map isn't the territory. I mean, it's such a cliche, I'm not even going to say that again. But it's one thing, we don't want to confuse the map with the territory. So what we do with an integral map is give you the best map available right now that covers all of human possibilities. And again, have found that there are five that are really, really important. We call them quadrants, levels, lines, states, and types. Now, every other human being, without exception, has those five same things going on. And if you know how to spot those, if you know they're there, then when it comes to leadership or just effective communication or skillful means, or just how to relate to somebody in a way that they can hear or understand you, you're going to do much, much better if the map that you're using is integral. We're going to start and initiate the sacred space of the practice with the sound OM. So inhale, exhale, oh. exhale, let your hands gently rest to your knees, deep inhalation, deep exhalation.
Welcome to Esalen, one of the most beautiful, if it's not the most beautiful place in the world. Esalen has 50 years of energy and learning and teaching here. The power of the land is just incredible. The freedom of this place, the freedom that was implicit in our founding vision. Esalen is definitely more than a retreat. The workshops that we offer are really about human and social transformation. Esalen has over 600 workshops a year that covers a broad spectrum. The whole gamut of body, mind, heart, soul, community, and environment. You know, we've gone through the week together, and I think we've bonded and we've come together. And, yeah. and getting intimate very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> we're having fun together. Yeah, fun and laugh.